Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean 3. Last time, we, well, found out that Nell went on a rescue mission, so we decided, what the hell, let's go on a rescue mission too. Though in our case, we're trying to save the one who's rescuing the other people. Anyway, uh, I actually made a little, uh, did a little backtracking here, because this is the one thing I forgot to check out when I was here that I actually wanted to show off. There's probably many other things, but... We actually get a little bit of background on, uh, I guess, Nell's father, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Anyway, I'll meet you back in uh, Kurslaw there. Kurslaw, Kurslaw, whatever. Anyway, since last time I've done a little bit of uh, extra stuff there, I went and I purchased uh, some additional blueberries, some aqua berries, probably won't need those. Uh, actually, I will need those, never mind. Uh, blackberries, make sure you get a good supply. The reason why I don't max them out to 20 is because you tend to get them after battle and you find them and I hate running over, you know, having too many, so. Anyway, with that being said, this is where we need to go, the Grana Hills. Now, as you may have noticed there, I have explored the majority of this already and, well, basically wanted to get most of that out of the way because, well, there's enough stuff to do today anyway. And it's easy enough to uh, clear the area out. I find it is rather tedious. There you go, there's our first example of Blackberries. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of these guys. Alright, let's go... I would like to be able to make use of Cycle Chain, but apparently they're not going to let me do that. Now, one thing that's... Uh, I'm not sure if it's come to my attention, but it's something I'd like to talk about. Looks like an even match. First of all, Sidekick in and of itself is not particularly good at hitting small enemies, as you can see. So, uh, don't use it for that. Let's uh, dodge that guy before he hits me. For the most part, that's gonna end up stunning. For the most part, I would avoid using things like, um... I think I'm getting the hang of this. Hey, would you look at that? I learned some new stuff. Cool. Lightning Blast. Uh, if I recall, it's somewhat decent or somewhat useful. Yeah, it's symbology. It's completely useless. Let's turn that off. <laughs> if it was a skill, it might be useful. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, Sidekick, although it is extremely good against the majority of enemies, it is not very good at uh, taking on small enemies. Uh, or small flying enemies. The larger flying enemies, it's fine with, but uh, the other ones, not so much. Now, the one thing I did want to talk about on uh, the wrong way is... I'll fight the rest of those morons off screen. Is um, my retaining of the bonus gauge throughout pretty much the entire Let's Play so far. Now, there is a very good reason why I want to do this. And that is, is it kind of helps me avoid having to do as much level grinding as I would otherwise have to do. Uh, that is one thing about Star Ocean in general, is there is a significant amount of level grinding that you will tend to do throughout the game. I fought one other battle off screen against uh, one of those flying insect things. And after that battle, we learned first aid. And I also got a battle trophy for Chain of 100. This is another reason why I'm basically cheesing my way through, even though technically I turned the game off, and if I was playing on a console, I would lose my battle gauge every time I turn the console off. Because I'm able to use save states here, it's not such a big deal. So that's the main reason is to avoid having to do a bunch of level grinding. You know, triple experience really does help, but the game does expect you to do uh, level grinding. That, that is one thing. Ow. Not uh, get hit there. Definitely, well, mainly it makes it easier for me because the game does expect you to do the level grinding. I'm not really a big fan of, uh, you know, having to stop the Let's Play and go off and grind off screen just to kind of keep in line with, um, you know, what's going to happen next, so. Okay, I think we've gotten pretty much all the treasure around here. Let's just check the map real quick. 
No, let's... I've got a few enemies to take off. Take care of here. I'll be back in a moment. And after those battles, we leveled up again and learned Stun, which, if I recall correctly, is very similar to Taunt, though I could be mistaken. It might be something that I can actually make use of. Okay, it is something I can make use of. Chance of knocking the enemy unconscious. Um, I almost never use it. I find putting effort into something that will actually be able to do damage because these don't. Skills like these and Taunt don't tend to work particularly well against bosses, and that's where the greatest challenge of the game is, specifically post-game, but even throughout the, uh, you know, the main storyline quest as well. So I would recommend avoiding them. If anyone else has used them to a particular level of effectiveness, let me know. I'll uh, see what I can do about uh, testing that out, but all from what I've seen in my numerous playthroughs, I'm not a big fan of it. Now, I've got a whole bunch of points and I've been forgetting to put them in, so let's, uh, let's do that. Once we've got that kind of a level, attack and defense up there a reasonable amount, we can probably start putting points into things like HP and MP. I'm going to get attack up to level 4 as well. You could go level 3, level 4, somewhere in that range. Um, just get a decent amount, uh, enough level so that when the AI does control the characters, they're not completely useless. And with that being said, this is the part that I didn't explore. There's a very good reason for that. I can't remember where the, uh, uh, whatever it is, the, uh, the sequence starts. And it does start around here somewhere, I think. Maybe it does let me go all the way in. Huh, would you look at that? It does let me go all the way in. But at least we get to see what we get here. There we go. Another bunny. Turn around. Okay, well, we've managed to uh, make our way to... No one's here. I wonder if we're too late. Don't say that. Here I go! Looks like an even match! Sorry about that. I had the uh, phone ring on me while I was in the middle of the cutscene. I was just ended up working out just well enough for me that uh, I didn't have to say anything, and I can just mute the audio from my uh, mic during that cutscene. Yeah, as you can see, having the um, I can't even pronounce it. The item that I got in uh, the town of Whipple that reduces my HP cost from using battle skills by 30% and 20%, so I think a total of 50. Um, yeah, that's very, very useful for something like, uh, you know, What a bunch of pushovers. It'll be smooth uh, sailing if they're all again. that easy. Yeah, they were pretty Still, easy. Still, keep alert. I know. Who do you think I am, anyway? A guy who relies on hunches that are never right. Who are you? Where is the other Crimson Blade spy? Capture her, you bumbling fools! We're sorry, my lord. We had her cornered, but she put up quite a fight. Sounds I familiar. I ordered you to apprehend her, not admire her. Yes, my lord. Though it would be kind of difficult to not. Sir Shelby! Uh-huh. What is it? You've got the Crimson Blade spy? No, sir. A report. And a missive from Duke Vox. Ah. From the captain of the Dragon Brigade? Hm. Give me your report first. Our sentries have spotted two suspicious men within the compound. Based on our intelligence, they might be the two escapees. Oh, yeah. I guess we would mm. kind of be recognized right So they've right come away. to the rescue, too. This is unexpected. I thought sending only one Crimson Blade was a bit light. The compassion of these followers of Apris is really playing into our hands. Find and capture them all. Do not fail me. Yes, my lord, and here, the missive. So what is it that the captain of the, uh, what was it, the Dragon Brigade wants with uh, Mr. Shelby here? Hmm? 
man, he seems to have a great deal of respect. <laughs> what is it, Sir Shelby? <laughs> this is rich. It seems Aldbell will not be back for some time. Oh, yeah. Oh, Captain, but why? Seems the captain of the Dragon Brigade has little love for our captain. Albel is being detained for a while. We're supposed to take care of things in the meantime. Oh, yeah. I see. Huh. By capturing the two escapees before Sir Albel returns, my lord will get all the credit. With such accolades, you might even be promoted to captain yourself. Exactly. Our prey is now within our grasp. We must act quickly. Before he returns, don't kill the escapees. They must be taken alive. Sir. Well, he looks like this uh, place doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, loyalty or these people, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that a couple of times just because I want to get all the map. Anyway, luckily for us, we have a healing point here, which is one reason why you shouldn't worry too much. Um, there is one other thing that I could note um, about preparations for coming to this area. Because one, it is quite confusing. Two, it is quite big. This door won't open yet. Um, and you're going to be here for a while. The enemies here are actually reasonably difficult as well. So kind of beware of that. But, um, nah, I didn't mean to do that, but okay. Uh, the one way is to fill up on items. The other way is to, uh, where is it here? Is to make use of the decrepit tome, which teaches common support symbols. Now, basically, this just teaches the healing spell and I think antidote or something like that to whoever you use it on. If you use it on anyone, I would recommend uh, Faith. Obviously, he has more MP. Um, he also has a higher magic stat. Not that that's a big deal, but uh, if you decide to do it, uh, I would choose him. I'm not a big fan of healing the spell in general. I very rarely use it. I have Nell use it throughout the game, and if she's not in my party, then I don't care. Uh, items by the later part of the game will be much, much, much more valuable than the healing spell, so I would, I tend to ignore them for the most part. Uh, one other thing that I did want to uh, get into, figure now is as good a time as any. Well, we can fight some enemies first. Real fucks take them all. Psychic, psychic, psychic. Is that all you got? Sidekick uh, spamming that didn't work very well. Oh well. There we go. That was fun. Those enemies not particularly tough, but they are. I was going to say irritating, but I think they just demonstrated that, didn't they? Um, so yeah, the thing that I did want to kind of talk about was um, battle trophies. Mainly, this isn't really the best time to do it, but they're, the best time to do it is going to be so late in the game that I'm going to forget half the things I want to mention. So, uh, go away, freaking dogs. Leave me alone. No, run away. I am going to start trying to avoid some of the dogs specifically in this area because they're really annoying. I don't like fighting them. They don't give a lot of experience and they have an ability, well, they have a lot of enemies in the fight usually with them, so they tend to uh, break your guard somewhat easily. Uh, but the way that the uh, battle trophies work and if you aren't playing, like, I've heard that the only versions that hit North America had the, um, the battle trophies in there, but the battle trophies indicate which version of the game you have, whether it's the uh, original version or if it was the director's cut. Now, with the director's cut, which is the version I'm actually playing, it has the battle trophies and a few other things. It has two optional characters uh, that were not available in the previous game, uh, a couple of extra cutscenes, nothing major, nothing you know, super special or anything that's going to change anything drastically usually minor things for side quests and such. But uh, in addition to that, there was also, um, well, with the battle trophies, we had access to not only another difficulty level, um, but we also got access to different character costumes, for lack of a better explanation. 
what you would do is you'd go to your menu here and yeah, I think you press the triangle button or something like that or R1 and L1 to cycle through the different ones and you get those based on your battle trophies. So if you, there are a total of 300 battle trophies in this game which is why I'm not going to get them all. I have played like eh, four or five playthroughs on my original PS2 and I don't have them all yet and I've tried to get a lot of them. I think I've got 200 and 240-ish, but yeah, it's it's ridiculous. If you get 45, you get the second outfit other than the original for all characters. Uh, with 75, you get the universe difficulty mode. 120, you get the, the uh, third set of outfits. At 165, you get the music test. At 195, you get the super hard difficulty mode, which I don't even think I've tried. No, I don't think I have tried that one yet. At 240, you get the fourth and final set of outfits, and at 285, you get what is known as full action mode. And what full action mode is, is it's a, a different way of doing uh, the battle system. I'll keep this battle in on screen to kind of demonstrate it. But basically, I'm just going to this in here anyway. Normally, like, if I'm going to attack this guy, I'm going to move around, not helping. If I want to use an attack, I basically run up to a certain point and use the attack, whether that be uh, an attack, a normal attack, or something else. With full action mode, what happens is if you hold down, it basically gets rid of long and short range, and I learn Berserk. Thank you, game. Uh, but yeah, so... It allows you to use any battle skill, regardless of range, at any point, even if you're going to completely miss. So, it's a kind of a mixed bag. There are some different issues that arise from uh, having to deal with that mode as is. I've never actually used it myself, but I've read enough to uh, kind of understand. So, anyway, that's uh, kind of what I wanted to go over. Um, there's not a lot of other differences between the director's cut. They've balanced out some skills. Um, you know, certain things will do more damage, certain things will do less damage. Basically, they've done a lot of balancing, and it's, they did a reasonable job. Because this game is quite, I wouldn't say perfectly balanced by any stretch of the imagination, but it is definitely um, more balanced than, you know, a lot of some of the other games I've played, specifically the uh, other Star Ocean. No, go away. I don't want you to. Stupid dogs. Anyway. So yeah, I definitely uh, wanted to go over that, now that I have kind of the opportunity to talk about it. There's nothing else really going on at the moment. Unfortunately, this area is going to feature a lot of this, because it's really difficult to actually get the uh, completion of the map uh, bunny for this area, uh, because... However, however they happen to do this, but there's definitely a lot of area to cover, and I'm going to be running into a lot of annoying enemies over and over and over again, but uh, hopefully you guys will bear with me. Unfortunately, this makes some of the dungeons not particularly interesting, is the word I wanted to use. But, since this dog didn't want to let me finish, oh well. It's not a big deal. It's just, it is kind of tedious, I'm sure, to watch somebody run around in circles like a moron uh, just to get map percentages. But it, but it is, I wouldn't say necessary, but it is definitely uh, a good idea to want to do all this stuff because not only do these bunnies um, you know, get you money, but you're basically revealing the map in the process of doing this, which makes it easier to understand where you have been, where, you know, how you get to some areas uh, that you haven't been to yet that somehow you missed, which will happen, uh, you know, don't have any uh, qualms about it. There's a lot of uh, areas that will be difficult to find through the first playthrough, and even through subsequent playthroughs if you, say, forgotten lots of uh, different parts of it. So anyway, that's pretty much all the time I have for this episode of Let's Play Star Ocean 3. And uh, next time we'll continue our uh, path through here, pick up some more treasure. Not that treasure, unfortunately. That's for later. Uh, but yeah, so that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.